Hi everyone, this is Richard Carlton. Welcome to another awesome video for the FileMaker platform. So in this video, I'm bringing in another expert into the conversation because while I know a lot about the FileMaker platform, there are specific industry experts in the community who know more about specific topics than I do. And I wanna introduce once again, Klaus Levent from Data Manix, although I like to say Data Maniacs. How are you, Klaus? I'm fine, thanks. How are you? I'm doing really well. And you've got what appears to be a potential awesome video here because a lot of people need to know about SVG. What's all that about? Let's, I guess we should start with what is this? SVG files is um, screen vector graphics. The really cool thing about SVG files is that they are not rasterized like a PNG or any other image format. So the great thing is that it's really just a calculation of an icon. And that's why FileMaker has uh, chosen that format. That's right. The FileMaker platform directly supports not only the creation of buttons, which it's always done, but the actual integration of an actual icon or glyph. And that's kind of a funny conversation there. Uh, FileMaker initially was calling this uh, glyphs. And now the terminology has been changed to icons. So you'll see those terms used interchangeably in our training. So you can actually draw a button on a layout and then select a relevant icon or glyph that helps represent or tell the story of what that button does. Now, you have the option, of course, uh, to have the glyph there by itself or the text by itself, which has always been that way. Or you can put the text to the left or to the right top, bottom, it doesn't really matter. And so a second ago, you were explaining what SVG images are, and that's what these images are in here that FileMaker gives us for free as part of the product, right? So yep. it's about rendering an icon at any size and having it look really good. I mean, that's what that's about, right? Exactly. So if we just draw this button really, really big and enhance the icon size, you can see that it just scales perfectly without any rasterization. Yeah, and so when you say rasterization, that's the idea where in a file that you're saving the actual data of a file, every little pixel is described in the file, whereas in SVG, that's not the case, right? It's it, There are actually lines and arcs and circles and things that describe it mathematically. It's a vector. And, uh, exactly. So whereas technically this functionality supports PNGs and SVGs, but SVG is by far the most recommended format because it scales so easily, whereas PNG, anytime you make an image too big, you see this all the time, people make an image too big, it gets pixelated. And that's yeah. because it's not designed to scale to a large size. So um, understand that this capability is about supporting both SVG and PNG, but we're recommending SVG. So what does the SVG file really look like under the hood? I mean, do you have a sample of yeah. that? Yeah, so here we have a folder with some uh, SVG icons. And actually, we can just open it up in a text editor. And here is the file. When we look at the preview, sure enough, we can see this is an arrow icon. But it looks like this when you get it into a text editor. So First of all, there is some explanation about who uh, who generates the icon and which version of the SVG format is it and where is the link to the descriptions uh, and stuff. And, and this is coming from uh, Adobe Illustrator. So that's some basic information. And then we have some, some other information about the background that is just around the actual icon. But here is the single line that describes how to draw this arrow on the screen. So this arrow can be described in a mathematical uh, formula which is just described just right here. And this is really great because it can just scale up and down without any problems. Now to be clear, this is not what PNGs or JPEGs or TIFFs or GIFs or anything, they don't look like this. I mean they literally are I mean, when you open those up, yeah, I mean, so that's what you get. And, and that's a representation of literally all the pixels and how they render in the display. Exactly. The rub is, is that there's no mathematical formula on any of these other image formats. Nope. 
that mathematical formula right here, all they have to do is, is tell it what size they want to render of the overall image. And it takes that formula right there and just pumps it up and it looks perfect, uh, which is yeah. a really cool part. So that's it's an important takeaway of this video so you understand that. So yeah. moving along, you have a tool that helps us with this in FileMaker, right? I mean, yeah. what's, is, there, is there a special SVG for FileMaker or is it a standard SVG? Yeah. Well, let's just make a test and say we have this button. So within the uh, palette of button setup, we can add an SVG file. This was the uh, SVG we were just looking at. And it comes in here nice and white, and uh, that's perfectly fine. But as you can see, it's not visible here. So we now can control the uh, button icon or really what we can control is the color of the icon so let's just try to make it another color in normal mode and as you can see it's not working yeah uh, that has limited you know practicality so svg there is great it scales but a standard svg file will not allow filemaker to change its color is that so that's not, basically not necessarily it really, there is some different uh, things about uh, this, but what we really need to do is we need to put in a class within the uh, icon itself. So when we are looking at, at this file here, we actually need to put in a class saying class equals fm underscore fill. And now I try to save it here. And if we go back and say, let's just remove this one and, then, and put in the new that we just edited here. And now we can see it in the right color that we have selected. We can change the color ah. uh, to anything else. And that's due to the reason that we have the fill class within the file just add it here after the fill color. And the fill color is set to 6F, uh, which is uh, the hex code for white color. And that is really good because yeah, but when I, it's set to... I have to, object, then would... I have to object at this point. I, I object because if I have to sit here and type that in all the time into all my files, yeah. uh, A, it just kind of a pain in the rear end it's going to burn a lot of time and so exactly. I, I, I dislike yeah. having to do that by hand yeah I totally get you but that's why uh, that's why you're getting this free tool which will help you okay well tell us about that so let's uh, let's take a look at that so it is completely open and unlocked it makes use of some of the new features but the tool here, first you need to make sure that you have installed the base elements plugin. And you can see the address to the base elements plugin from Goya here. It's a free plugin and it's a great plugin. But what does it so, do? So the, so the plugin fixes images? Is that what it does? Uh, no, no, not really. But it allows us to write directly into uh, the files itself. So ah. we can read the content of the file, and then we can write down the edited content of the file. And, you know, this is simply just text within a file. So we just need to work with this as a text. And you know which uh, application that is really great at uh, doing uh, manipulation with text? Yeah, you're right. It's FileMaker. So you just need to make sure that you have the base elements and uh, there are some buttons here in order to install the most recent version which is uh, version 3 today or you can go to the base elements the Goya site and uh, get the newest version of the plugin so this is standard I have already installed the plugin so now we have the folder here with the SVG files and there's a button here and select the parent folder of uh, the icons. Actually, this function can also take a full top folder and any subfolders of this top folder. So if you have the icons, let's say you have thousands and thousands of icons you, you have per case somewhere, and they are in, uh, divided into uh, subfolders, you can just uh, select the uh, top uh, folder like I'm doing here, and I say open, and now 
all the images is edited. So let's just take the next icon and sure enough here it's added class FM fill. And we could take just so you can see I'm not joking, here it's also edited. It was a matter of seconds you have edited uh, 306 icons and put in the FM fill class. The SVG format works with FileMaker, but it doesn't really give us the controls to change the color unless we have that one little bit of text in there. But to add exactly. the, adding the text is kind of a pain. So you built a tool, and the plugin allows you to manipulate text files, I guess. And then you told FileMaker to go through an entire directory and exactly. open each file. And if it's an SVG, then to go in and add that bit of text automatically. That is super cool. I mean, like that will save a ton of time. In fact, there's your so, code, I guess, right? That's the code, and it, it doesn't take a lot. It's basically just select the top folder, and then we generate a, a, a list of files, and then we just loop through them and read whatever is in, in the current file, and then we create the new content where we do some substitution and put in the, uh, well, I can show it here, where you put in the uh, class of FM fill, and I actually also put in the white color as a fill color in order to make them look uh, better in case they were uh, originally black or whatever it was. And some explanation here if you want to do some modification yourself. So pretty simple, and then we just uh, end up uh, by writing the file back to itself with the same file name, now and then be, it's done. Now, to be clear, you don't have to do any advanced scripting to use this tool. We're just checking this out, right? We don't have to make a change. Oh, yeah, 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 sure. sure. You, you can use it as is, or if you want to uh, make some uh, modifications because you're a great developer, you're totally welcome to. <laughs> well, that's awesome. So what we've done here is we've taken a standard SVG, we've made it effectively FileMaker compatible SVG, and then your tool here is also a library, right? So show us that part. Yeah, I just want to just show that we can take any of the converted files down here and it will work. Here is it. Uh, and we could change the color right. as well. Another cool thing that you could easily overlook is that this is the normal state, but you can actually set a different color in, in the hover mode or in the pressed mode if you'd like to uh, to do that. And that's actually something that brings life to your application, wow. also with the icon color. So you can just play around with that. So the SVG is a great format for these icons. Unfortunately, FileMaker is not able to create previews of how the file looks. So what I did here was uh, we got some icons and we got them in SVG formats, but the exact same icons also in PNG format. And they have the same name except for the file extension. So in this tool, I also put in the uh, a gallery function, which is totally plain simple. And there's a button, import files, and you need to select the SVG folder uh, select the folder with uh, the SVG, which is called white right now, and now we need to select the folder with the PNG versions of the SVG files, and this was the PNG files, and then we just say OK, and now it imports all the icons and pair them up with the PNG version and the actual SVG file. So this is the gallery, which is completely simple. You can give it another icon name or you can put it into collections. And this is just a simple checkbox uh, value list. So you can just, if you want to have uh, anything else, you can just edit the value list to fit whatever needs you have. And then the idea with this is we have 306 and it, maybe it's not everything I, I believe is the standard. Uh, for example, there's several versions of... Uh, what it is, uh, you know, loading icons, uh, but maybe this is the one I really like in the standard, and maybe this one should be a special icon, for example, and, and this one is something I use often, as well as this one and another one. You get the idea. And then we can uh, make a search for all the standards, and now we have eight 
So this is a collection that I would call standard and the ones I would have. So now it would have been great if we could just have copy and paste or scripts saying now I want to transfer this icon to the built-in palette of FileMaker so I can select it as an icon for the button. But that is not possible in this version of FileMaker. Uh, hopefully it, it will be in, in the future, but we need to get these files out in order to be able to select them like we did before. So uh, here we can just export the files and uh, we just need to uh, select a folder or we can create a new one saying this is standard or maybe I should just call them icon standard and yeah let's go ahead and here the collection is outputted here and we have the SVGs here ready for use. All right well hopefully people are clapping because I'm clapping. That's very impressive. And it's one of those critical tools that we need right now in the community. So great work on that. Um, it's, it's completely free, completely unlocked. So do whatever you want. It is totally simple. We, you could easily uh, just say, well, let's put in uh, another icon name here saying arrow uh, left. And, and then you would maybe say this should be named arrow down because now it's easier to get what the icon really is without having to get some preview and it's also difficult to see the preview when we have set the fill color for uh, to white but currently the the script is not picking up this name it's actually taking the file name from the uh, file itself but it's so easy to change in the script so just feel free to do that or modify it in any way you would like that's fantastic. So this brings up the idea of galleries and trying to draw icons. And I'm a big fan of leveraging things that are already done. And so I've had the opportunity to talk to the folks at icons8.com, which is one of the premier companies that builds SVG artwork. At this point, that kind of wraps up what we're doing here for everyone. Uh, I want to thank Klaus for building this tool. This is great. And when you download the tool, it will come with a handful of pre-built icons in the gallery for you. And once again, I want to recommend that you uh, go and support the Icons 8 people um, if you're going to use any of their artwork. It's very important for us to support the people in the community. That way, uh, they feel incentivized to continue to do a great job. That's why you know we pay for the licenses. So they make money, and they stay in the business, and they build more icons for us that are relevant. Excellent, excellent. Exactly. All right, anything else, but Klaus? It's a real cool feature we get now with the icons. That's really cool. No, outstanding. Well, thank you once again for building the tool. And this is Richard Carlton for LearningFileMaker.com. Feel free to visit Klaus on his website or to download this tool specifically. Feel free to visit FMStartingPoint.com. And under the marketing section, you'll see a link for you to download this for free. So until next time, this is Richard Carlton signing off.